welcome back to Sydney and Starlet. Can't say Starlet. 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 Welcome back to Sydney and Starlet. And if you are new here, welcome. Welcome. Enjoy the videos. Videos. So today, me and Sydney are going to be reading Walt Disney Pictures: The Black Good Ways Cauldron. So let's get. Up yank started. Oh, hold on. Let's look for some Disney characters here. Can you find Robin Hood? Woke. Robin? What beak? Hood. Hood. Good job. That's Robin Hood. Can you find Cinderella? Saya. Cinderella. Where is Mick Scrooge? You Scrooge. Where is Lady? Lady from Lady Lady and the Tramp. Yank. Good job. Where is Peter Pan? Give it back. Peter Pan. Okay, one more. Where's Bambi? Bye, Bambi. Bambi. Good job. Oh, the Black Cauldron. In the distant land of Prydan lived an old farmer named Dobbin. Can you say Dobbin? Gabby. Dobbin. He kept ducks and geese and cats and dogs and a small pig called Henwen. Can you say Hen? Hayes. Wen. Wake. Henwen. His young apprentice, Taryn, helped him take care of the animals. Can you say animals? Animals. Animals. Life on the farm was peaceful and happy until the day when Dobbin hurried home with some very bad news. Whatever shall we do, he muttered. I know there was something wrong. I felt it in my bones. Can you say bones? Bones. Bones. Dobbin was talking to himself, but his red tomcat jumped onto the table to listen. As I passed through the woods, the farmer told him, I heard that the evil horned king is about to invade Prydan. Dobbin peered anxiously at his old parchment map. The fur folk have gone into hiding, he said. They know what's coming. Can you say coming? Ah, uh, yeek. Coming. But young Terran wasn't afraid when he heard the news. At last I shall be a warrior, he shouted, snatching up a stick. He waved it like a sword. On guard, scoundrels, your time has come, he cried. The ducks and geese squawked angrily, but Terran paid no attention until Dobbin broke into his daydream. Terran, what are you doing? Terran! He said Terran. Yes. Terran. When Dobbin saw that Terran was fighting the birds, he scowled him. It's your job to look after Henwen, he said, and it's time for her bath. Can you say bath? Bath. Bath. Henwen was a small blue-eyed pig who loved to wallow in the mud. Can you say mud? Mud. Bike. Mud. Bah, muttered Terran, as Henwen splashed happily in her tub. A brave warrior like me should not be pampering pigs. Just then, Henwen jumped up and stared around with a look of terror on her face. What's wrong, Hen? asked Terran. Concerned, he picked up the quivering pig to calm her. Can you say pig? Pig. Pig. Bring her inside, said Dobbin, adding to himself. I was right then. In the cottage, Dobbin filled a basin of water and set, and set lighted candles around it. Tell no one what you are about to see, he warned Taryn. Then Dobbin stirred the water and recited a magic spell. Can I say spell? But Spell. Henwen steered into the swirling water as Taryn watched in wonder. Can I say wonder? What? Yik. Wonder. Suddenly, the surface of water began to glow like molten gold. Then a terrifying vision appeared. A great black, black cauldron overshadowed by the hideous horned shape. It's the horned king, cried Dobbin. He is coming back to destroy us. Henwen and a trace continued to stare into the basin. As the vision faded, her image appeared in the water. More frightened than ever, Dobbin explains to Taryn, the Horned King is searching for the magic cauldron, which no one will restore, wait, which will restore him to power. Now he was discovered, 
Now he has discovered the secret to Henwen's vision. You must hide her in the forest until I come for you. If the Horned King captures Henwen and uses her power to find the magic cauldron, he will destroy us all. Hurriedly, Dal Dalbin packed some bread in a bag and waved goodbye to Taryn and Henwen. I won't fail you, promised T I won't fail you, promised Taryn. Then Henwen set off into the forest. Can I say forest? Forest. Forest. One day, the two companions stopped to drink when they came to a stream. As Taryn bent over the swirling water, he saw a vision of a knight in full armor. Who is that? gasped Taryn. Beneath the gleaming helmets, he saw his own face. I shall be a warrior instead of a pig keeper, shouted Taryn excitedly. It was you who showed it to me, Henwen. But when he turned around, Henwen was gone. Can you say gone? Yes. Gone! Hen cried Taryn in alarm. Where are you? Come back! The boy dashed into the forest, his heart hammering. He couldn't believe that he had failed his mission to keep Henwen safe. Henwen, he cried, cupping his hands around his mouth. Come back! Can you say come? Guns. Back! Can you say back? Bang. Back! Hearing a noise in a nearby bush, Taryn pulled an apple from his pocket. Is that you, Henwen? he called, moving toward the bush. Come see the nice apple I've got for you. Just then, a heavy weight landed on his shoulder and knocked him down. Yeah, yelled his attacker, leaping after the apple as it rolled away. Imagine Terran's astonishment when he saw who had assaulted him. A small, furry creature with wild white hair and a bushy mustache. He was holding the apple behind his back. Oh, great prince, give your poor starving gurgy munchings and crunchings. Nice apple, said the creature, looking hopefully at Taryn. Then he turned toward the bushes with his prize. Oh, no, you don't, cried Taryn. That's my apple. But before he could get the apple away from Gurji, Taryn heard a shrill, squealing sound. It's Henwen, he cried excitedly. She's in trouble. A moment later, the little pig raced through the clearing at top speed. Right behind her was a winged, a huge winged, equipment, a kind of flying dragon, about to seize her and its terrible claws. Can you say claws? Yes. Claws. Must hide, Gurji in alarm, cried Gurji in alarm. Gwithent came, Gwithent come from Horns King's castle. Very bad place. He dove into the bushes, but Taryn ran to Henwen's rescue. As the Gwithent caught her in its claws, desperately, Taryn clutched the monster's tail, but, in sh but it shook him off and rose into the air with the squealing Henwen. She was carried away to a dark, distant castle. Taryn tore after the Gwithids, but by the time he reached the gloomy castle, the wind shape had disappeared into a tower. Can you say tower? Yeah. Tower! Taryn took a flying leap at the vine that climbed the tower. Avoiding the vine's sharp thorns, he made his way to the steep wall. I mustn't look down, he muttered, steady to himself. But Gurji's last words of warning still echoed in his ears. Don't go. Don't go. No one's come back from the Horned King Castle. At last, trembling from the strain, Taryn reached a lighted window. With one last push, he heaved himself over the sill and stared above him. Far below was a great crowd of rough-looking warriors. Can I say warriors? Warriors. Warriors, the Horned King's henchmen, gathered around a crude table. They roared with cruel laughter and chanted blood-curdling threats against their enemies. Terran stood frozen with fear. Luckily for Terran, the warriors were so busy waving their swords and horn cups that they didn't notice him perched high above them. Prydan will soon be ours, shouted one voice above the others. Then a, gr a green dwarf hopped onto a barrow and spread a piece of meat on the table. Get out, creepers, shouted one of the henchmen, lunging at the dwarf, who snarled back at him. Suddenly, an icy wind stirred the wall images. The candles flickered and went out. Everyone fell silent in fear. Can you say fear? Fire. Fear! And a loud explosion filled the hall with smoke. Terran saw a dark shape. A shape crowned with horns standing in an archway. Henchmen, woodlands, even the dogs, even the dogs 
drew back as the menacing figure moved toward the throne at one end of the hall. Welcome, your master. Welcome, your majesty, said the dwarf, busily dusting the steps to the throne. Silence, boomed a deep, hollow voice. Where is the prisoner? The pig must be made to reveal the hiding place of the magic cauldron. Can you say cauldron? <laughs> cauldron. I want your majesty, cried the dwarf, racing away to the dungeon. I must hurry, whispered Terran. Plunging into a dark tunnel, he fled down a flight of stairs until he saw a light coming from Henwen's cell. The dwarf threatened Henwen with a hot coal. I warn you, he said cruelly, to, cruelly just as Terran burst into the dungeon. Don't, cried the boy. Can I say don't? Don't. Don't. Smirking creeper drags Terran and Henwen back to the great hall. There, the horned king beckons the, them toward the throne. I presume you are the keeper of this pig, demanded the king. Uh, um, y yes, sir, replied Taryn, trembling. Then instruct her to show me the whereabouts of the magic cauldron. A barrel of water was placed at the foot of the steps. Taryn muttered to Henwen, I'm sorry, Hen, you've got to show him. I can't let him kill you. <laughs> Taran recited the words of the magic spell, and Henwen began to go into a trance. A faint image of the magic cauldron appeared into the water. Yes! screamed the horned king, leaping from his throne. Taran was so startled that he jumped up and tipped over the barrel of water. Seizing Henwen in his arms, he raced from the hall. Can you say hall? Hall. Hall. After them, cried the door. And the henchmen ran down the cor corridor in pursuit. It's okay, Hen, whispered Terran, holding tightly to the frightened pig. We'll get away. Behind them, Creeper was still yelling, Catch them! After them! Terran dashed through an open door and bolted it behind him. Only then did he see that they had reached a dead end. Can you say dead end? It is. Dead? Dead. End. End. Dead end. On a balcony high over the moat, 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 Creeper and the henchman broke down the doors as Terran struggled to lift Henwin over the parapet. parapet. Swim, Hen, the boy cried, letting her go. Just as Creeper grabbed his foot, the henchman seized him and dragged him off to the dungeon. Can you say dungeon? Where is it? Dungeon! Terran sat in the cobwebbed dungeon, brooding about his problem until something caught his attention. A bright ball of light floated up into his gloomy prison from a hole in the floor. Can you say floor? Yuck. Floor! A beautiful girl climbed out of it. I'm Princess Ilanwi, said the girl, another prisoner of the Horns King. He thought my magic bobble could lead him to the old cauldron. That's why he took my pig, said Taran. I was hoping you were a warrior who could help me escape, said Ilanwi, disappointed. No, said Taran, de dejectedly. I'm just an assistant pig keeper who wanted to be a warrior. Well, come with me if you like, said the princess, stepping back into the hole. Taran followed her and found himself standing on some beams above the ground. He jumped down, and the sparkling bobble led him through the dark corridor. Rats scurried past them, running from the bobble's light. Can you see light? Yes. Light. They followed the light of the bobble through the underground passageways and ghostly caves. Can you say caves? Yes. Caves. Eventually, they came to an eerie cavern where there, where the air was ice cold. A rural chamber, said Alanway, shivering. Before them stood a high stone tube, top tube, where they carried image, well, sorry, where they carved image of a fallen king rest, rested. Cautiously, Terran approached the cobwebbed figure and saw something glint glinting in the darkness breathless he lifted a magnificent sword from the tube suddenly a strange noise made him jump is that a voice whispered along me peering into another 
underground cell, Taryn and Alanwi were shocked to see a man, a man tied up there. He was calling to one of the henchmen. But you don't realize who I am. There's some mistake. I'm Fludor Flam, minstrel of minstrels. Bla Baladir to the grandest courts. The henchman paid no attention and passed by. Taryn and Alanwe slipped into Fludor's cell. Shh, cautioned Taryn as he untied the minstrel. We'll soon have you out of here. The three companions stole into the, quarry, the corridor, about to make their escape, when they heard cries of alarm and the clang of weapons. They know we're missing, cried Alanwe. The henchmen were closing in on them. Behind me, ordered Taryn. I have the sword. Just then, brutal henchmen welding an axe emerged from the darkness and lunged at Taryn. The boy raised the sword to fend off blow, and the axe fell to pieces and burst of light. The sword is magic, cried Taryn. You see Taryn? Yes. Taryn Alawi and Fludor ran down a passage and up a stair with the henchmen close behind them. Through a door and a round corner, they found themselves at the drawbridge. bridge. Run, cried Taryn. He stopped and swung at the drawbridge chain with at the, the drawbridge chain with his magic sword. The chain broke and the gates fell just as the three companions dashed under it. Can I say under? What yeah? Under. At last, Taryn Alanwe and Fludor stopped to rest. They had broken out the Horned King's castle and escaped from the clutches of his henchmen. Now they, set, they sat by a river in a forest glade, making plans. Taryn told his companions about Henwen while Alanwe mended a rip in Fludor's pants. And Fludor made up a song about their adventures. Can you say adventures? Yes, sir. Adventures! Suddenly, they heard a rustling in the woods nearby. A furry white head popped out of the tree's roots. It's Gurji, said Taryn with delight. Kind master, good master, Gurji has found tracks of the piggy. If Gurji shows master the piggy's tracks, will kind master give Gurji munchings and quenchings? Can I say quenchings? What is? Quenchings. You found Henwen, cried Taryn. Please, Gertie, show us the way. The little creature led the way into a cavern where the tracks of a pig were clearly marked in the sand of the cave's floor. Can you say floor? Yeah, yeah. Floor. By the light of Alanwe's bubble, they, found, they followed the tracks into a deep lake in the heart of the cave. See, said Gertie, the piggy has been here. But where'd he go? asked Taryn, puzzling for the tracks led straight to the edge of the lake. Gurdji began to cross the water on stepping stones, but once he reached the lake's center, the water began to whirl around him. The whirlpool was sucking him under. Gurdji cried, help, master. Hold on, cried Taryn, reaching for him. But Gurdji clutched him so tightly that Taryn, too, was drawn into the whirlpool. When Alanwe tried to save Taryn, pulling Fludor behind her, all four of them sank beneath the water. Can you say water? Why? Water. Moments later, they found themselves in another cave below the lake. Several fair folk circled overhead, then hurried to tell their king of the new arrivals. King Ediling came to greet his visitors, and Taran found Henwen there among the fair folk, safe and sound. He also learns that the magic cauldron was hidden in the land of Morva. My servants. Dolly will guide you there, said the king. Then he sprinkled travelers with fairy, fairy, fairy dust and sent them on their way. Fairy dust. Can you say fairies? For you. Fairies. Magical fairies. Moments later, Dolly alighted on a tree stump in the middle of an evil smelling marsh. There it is, said Dolly, pointing to a tumble-down cottage, the hiding place of the magic cauldron. Bless my soul, said Fludor. What are those frogs doing here? Those aren't frogs, they're people, said Dolly. He explains that the three witches who lived in the cottage had changed their victims into frogs. Can I say frogs? What? Frogs. Then he wished them luck and st started home. I not like this place, muttered Gurji. Let's hope no one's home, said Taryn, pushing open the creaky cottage door. 
What sound does the frog make? Rabbit! 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 Inside the dark cottage, unseen eyes watch from a high shelf as the four companions searched for the magic cauldron. Suddenly, there was a great explosion. A mountain of cauldrons appeared before them. In the smoke, they made out. They made out the farewell. No, no, they made out. They made out the fair, fearful, <laughs> the fearful forms of three witches, or gotch, or do, and Orwin. Can you say Orwin? Oh, like Orwin. You evil people, shrieked Ordu. You shall be turned into frogs and eaten. Can you say eaten? Right, yes. Eaten. Nice to meet you, lady, ladies, said Fleador. Goodbye now, as he turns to flee, Orwin grabbed his cape and pulled him close to her. My, my, she said admiringly. Aren't you handsome and what a lovely heart? Don't you just find me irresistible? Fludor stammered. Yes, I, well, of course, most attractive. As he tried to back away, Orin's sister, Orgot, snapped. Enough of this lovesick nonsense. Can you say nonsense? What is? Nonsense. Can you say harp? Harp. Oh. Harp. Can you say witch? Witch. Witch. Which is? Orgot pointed at Fludor, and a sharp zap of electricity crackled through the room. Instantly, Fludor disappeared. In his place was a frog trapped in a bodice of Orin's dress. Great beeling croaked Fludor. Enough, shouted Terran, waving his sword. We've come for the magic cauldron. Give it to us. Startled, Owen dropped the frog, and Fludor appeared croaked on the floor. The three witches stared at Terran and his magical sword in amazement. Then Ordu asked shyly, what will you give us in exchange for the cauldron? <laughs> I'll give you my dearest possession, answered Terran. My sword. No, Terran, cried Lanwi, but the boy paid no attention. Agreed, said Ordu. We, we have made a bargain. In a flash of lights, the sword vanished from Terran's hand. Then the cottage itself disappeared. The travelers found themselves lying face down on the ground. An earthquake rumbled around them. The magic cauldron appeared, pushing up from beneath the ground. Terran rose, picked up a broken tree limb, and lunged at the cauldron. The wick the witches laughed mockingly from above. The magic cauldron can be never destroyed, called Ordu. Only its evil powers can be stopped. But how? asked Terran. The witches answered, Chow. The witch's answer chilled his blood. Someone must climb into a, of his own free, will never return alive. With that, the witches vanished. Can you say vanished? Right, yes. Vanished. The little group looked around sadly, unsure of what to do. Then they felt the cold shadow of Gwyntent pass over them. Three henchmen with sharp spears sprang from behind a tree. Pig boy, shouted one of the henchmen triumphantly. Gurji, hiding behind the tree, gasped fearfully. Oh, oh, trouble. Goodbye. He ran for cover. Terran along with Fludor were taken back to the Horned King's castle along with Magic Cauldron. The king, the king gulted over his capture of the cauldron and laughed mockingly at his prisoners. Such a brave and handsome group. A pig boy, a scurly maid, and a broken down minstrel. Oh, thank you very much, whispered Fludor indignantly. But the evil king had already turned back to the cauldron. Raising his hands high, he cried, Army of the Den, arise! The three, the three captives watched in horror as a phantom army rose from the magic cauldron. Ghoulish skeletons armed with axes and swords marched through the smoke in every and ever glowing numbers. Creeper, the dwarf, cheered the advent the advance of the three <laughs> of the terrible army but even the henchmen fled before the cauldron born Terran and Lanwi and Fludor stared at one another hopelessly as they saw the fates that awaited their lands and themselves 
Oh, I wish I stayed a frog, said Fludor sadly. I was so much happier. But Gurji had not forgotten his friends. Psst, master, he whispered from the arch above. Gurji, cried Taran, relieved. What are you doing here? Gurji said, Gurji set you free. Then we leave this evil place. As soon as Gurji freed them, Taran sprang from the arch to the ledge that overlooked the boiling cauldron. Suddenly, a non Suddenly, along we realized what Taryn meant to do. No, don't, she cried. No, master, echoed Gurji, running to block Taryn. Not go into evil cauldron. I must stop it, cried Taryn. But Gurji was too quick for him. Shutting his eyes tightly, he leaped headlong into the cauldron. No, cried Taryn, covering his face. Oh, no. As Gurji disappeared, an enormous explosion rocked the throne room. Outside, the drawbridge collapsed, throwing thousands of phantom warriors into the moat. All over the castle, the cauldron born dis disintegr disintegrated into heaps of bones. Last of all, screaming in his fur screaming in flurry, furry. The horned king was sucked into the magic cauldron. My power cannot die, he shrieked and vanished from the earth. Run for your lives, shouted Taran. Fleeing through the dark corridors, the three companions saw the floors open up to swallow both henchmen and weapons as they tried to escape. Deep under the earth, the, call, the castle's water gates, they found a small boat. They leaped aboard the flue door. They leaped aboard and Fludor pulled them to safely, even as the Horn King's castle crumbled into ruin. Ruin. Can you say ruin? Why? Ruin. The travelers left the boat with heavy hearts, thinking their brave friend Gurji looking behind. Wait. The travelers left the boat with heavy hearts, thinking of their brave friend Gurji. Looking back, they saw the magic cauldron floating on the water. The witches appeared in the clouds above it. Now that the cauldron is no use to you, said Ordu, we'll just take it and be on our way. Not so fast, Fluter replied. What do you offer in return? The magic sword, said Orgotch. What does a pig boy need with a sword? asked Taryn. I have another offer, the cauldron for Gurji. We have made a bargain, laughed Ordu. The cauldron began to spin wildly in the water. Then it rose from the surface in a whirl whirlwind of white light and touched down briefly on the stone. When it whirled away, the still form of Gurji laid on the ground before them. Tearfully, the group ran to Gurji's side and knelt down. Taran lifted Gurji's tenderly and hugged them. Fluidor was silent, but Alanwi began to sob. Suddenly, Taran felt a small paw slipping onto his vest, as if a search for an apple. Gurji, he stammered in disbelief. You're alive! Gurji felt himself care carefully to make sure he was really alive. Great Balin, shouted Fludor. He's alive! Oh, Fludor, cried Alanwi, jumping for joy. I'm alive, said Gurji happily, clinging to Taran. Look, touch me! Alanwi drew closer to give him a kiss and ended up kissing Taran as well. Blushing, Taran said, come on, let's go home. Gurji's happy day, cried Gurji. Hand in hand, the friends set out on the long journey for, on the long journey home. Can I say home? Oh, home. Meanwhile, on Dalbin's farm, Henwen watched them in a pool of water. The fair folk had brought her home once she was out of danger. Together, Henwen and Dalbin awaited in return, awaited the return of the heroes. And of Pridan rejoiced that the evil power of the king and the magic cauldron had been banished from the land. The is the end. So that is it for today's video, everyone. We really hope you all enjoyed it. And we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Pick out your favorite page.
That's a very good page. Who's your favorite character? A week. Taryn. Can I say Taryn? Go ahead. Taryn. Bye-bye. Flee, 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 flee.